So much to my chagrin, my Quickset Smart Key uh, single pin pick video has become the most popular video on my channel. And uh, I say to my chagrin because what I really want to be the most popular video on my channel is the Asa Twin 6000 video I did, which is far and away the most difficult lock I have ever picked. Um, really proud of that one. <laughs> the Quickset Smart Key is not a trivial pick, but um, they're child's play compared to that lock. But anyway, I get a number of questions about these smart keys. And a fellow picker named Chad reached out to me recently with, um, he wanted to get my thoughts on some design changes that he noticed in his lock that mine didn't have, that he didn't see in the video when I picked and gutted mine. And so he did a great job explaining it. Um, but I was having a really hard time envisioning uh, the changes that he was describing to me. And so he was kind enough to send me his lock so that I could take a look at it and uh, give him my thoughts. And Chad, I really appreciate you taking, uh, giving me the, the trust of sending me your lock. I, I really do appreciate that. Um, so the changes that he was describing to me are in the, uh, the way the sidebar is retained. And so this this lock is is equipped with these retaining clips and these captured springs which uh, put a small amount of inward pressure on the sidebar and then so correspondingly that inward pressure is transferred to these wafers and this is this is what those wafers look like um, a slightly magnetic pick. Uh, this right here, this V groove on this side is the true ga gate. These little ripples that you can see are the false gates. These sawtooth uh, serrations over here are what rest into these uh, little shelves on the key pins. And those key pins move, obviously, up and down when you move the key in and out. And so to rekey this without pinning it, you put the key in, which positions these shelves. You line all these up, and then you slide it in place, which positions these little shelves into one of these serrations, which then keys the lock. And so this captured sidebar puts inward pressure on these on this side of these these wafers which are then controlled by these key pins so it's kind of a wafer key pin uh, hybrid lock it's a unique design but what this lock what Chad's lock has that mine didn't is these retaining clips and a very different sidebar design so mine didn't have these retaining clips it didn't have these captured springs and it didn't have a squared off sidebar Mine had a triangular shaped sidebar, which nested into a correspondingly V-shaped uh, sidebar channel. And when I put rotational force on the core, it would then try to drive the sidebar into these wafers. With this one, it doesn't do that. And in fact, if there's any pressure, I'm going to put the lock together so now. Far. If there is any pressure, rotational force applied to the lock, whatsoever, this squared off sidebar will bind, and even if the key pins are in the right position, even if the wafers are lined up with the true gates, they will not, uh, the core will not turn. And so, anybody, by the way, anybody who's curious about doing this, uh, key, rekeying a, a quick set smart key without uh, buying the keying annex, you just line these gates up, make sure that when you put it in, you push it all the way back, let it go, and then slide in. Your, key, your lock is now keyed. And so you can see as I pull that out, these wafers protrude out at varying, uh, to varying degrees, depending on which sawtooth the, the little shelf rested into. And you can see how squared off this uh, sidebar is. Now if we put the key in, you can see that sidebar retracts all on its own. No pressure, no force is required. Uh, rotational force is required to press to 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 retract that sidebar. These captured springs do all the work. Now, if I put it in, line up the sidebar with the channel, the plug doesn't turn. 
Now, if I put the key in, the plug does turn. And, but what's really interesting, like I said before, if I put the key partially in, tension the core slightly, I'm putting some rotational force on the core, then slide the key all the way in, it won't turn. I have to let off all the tension, then it'll turn. So QuickSet has completely removed our ability to tension this core. And that's because of the square shape of this sidebar. The, the, the springs and the inward pressure are just a way to ensure that the sidebar retracts when the, when the gates line up. So I've been thinking a lot about how to attack this lock. And um, then largely coming up empty. How do I pick a lock that I can't tension? Um, like I said, normally a V-shaped sidebar would, by tensioning the core rotationally, would put inward force on the sidebar binding the wafers. And that's how it happened with the one I picked. Um, and so yes, Quickset has dramatically changed the design. So I have only one idea really, and that is to use uh, some kind of a shim. Now I can get in here. There's a this where this ball bearing goes conveniently opens up it conveniently opens up a little window into that sidebar channel. And even when the lock if I can find the part shoot. Oh here it is. Even when the lock is in its housing, I can still get in there. And I think even when it has the little front plate on, I can still sneak a pin in there and get it get it in. So my thinking is, and what as as I've been thinking about how to attack this lock, I'm thinking that putting a shim in here of some kind, running that shim down, and normally if there was a cover on it, it would. This is just a, a pin. A sewing pin pushing that thing into place you can see how when it crosses the sidebar it does impose some inward inward force on that sidebar now that's important for two reasons first off it's going to bind these pins with um, with the core set up the way it, 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 it is um, with just those springs there's not enough pressure to bind these pins they just spring right back out at you. But if you get this thing in there just right, then you can kind of finagle it in such a way that it will actually bind these pins and cause them to stay. See how that one stayed? It didn't bop back down on me. So you can you can actually get enough pressure on them to where they'll bind on you. The other reason it becomes important is with that inward pressure, it will cause the sidebar to retract under some moderate amount of rotational force. And so I have not gotten the lock picked yet uh, using this strategy, but um, I have gotten the pins to bind um, to greater or lesser degrees, and I have had some success setting them. So I believe it should only be a matter of time before I'm able to get the lock picked. That's my best idea for now on how to attack this lock with the changes Quickset has introduced. But it, the changes are dramatic, um, so we're going to have to see. Hopefully I'll be back with a uh, pick and gut for this lock. Um, but that's a, that's the 10,000 foot view on the problem that we now have from Quickset. So thanks for watching, and thanks Chad for sending me your lock.